Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we fixed the display of our nav items in the navbar component where the items will be shown to the logged in user based on the status. So if the user is logged in, he can see the products nav link and he can also see the logout button because he's logged in and the username will be also dis displayed in the navbar. So we have fixed that in this video tutorial, we will be fixing our modal pop-up. Since we know that there are errors that are going to be displayed in the modal pop-up and we have not yet written code to display those errors. We have written code to create a modal pop-up and pop up the model, but we have not yet written code to display the errors inside the model. Before we go ahead and start writing that code let's go ahead and see what the problem is and how we fix it now this is my inspect tab and this is my network tab now let's go ahead and try to create a user called as tech howdy password now we all know if you're watching my video tutorial that that user already exists in our database which means we cannot use the same username and also we cannot use the same email so is there something that is handling this kind of error? So let's click submit and look at our network tab. So as expected, we cannot register a user whose email name is TechHowdy because it's already exists in our database. We can also not register a email called as TechHowdy Gmail because our requirement is the email needs to be unique. And where does this requirements come from? If you go and open your startup class in your application and scroll to services.addidentity, here in this pipeline, when you are validating the password, you notice we have mentioned we require a unique email. That's what it does. That's what the identity user ASP.NET identity does. It validates if the unique email is provided. Also, there is no validation for unique username because that is automatically managed by ASP.NET identity. So you don't have to specify a that options.user.unique username because it's automatically done by ASP.NET identity framework. Now let's go back to our application and here let's see what error we received. So if we open this triangle here, this and let's see what errors we have. Click on the error here. When you open this, expand this error list, see what error we get. Username tech howdy is already taken. Email tech howdy is already taken. So that's the error that is being written by our ASP.NET identity framework. So now we have identity framework which is doing this for us. But instead of displaying these errors here inside this console, we will display it in the modal pop-up. So now without wasting any time, let's go ahead and start coding the modal pop-up where we can display the errors. So let's do that. Let's go back to application. Now what we need here is to open the registration component. So let's go ahead and open the registration component. Yes, here. And also let's open the HTML component of a registration because our model pop-up is inside here, the template. And if you remember, we had commented this. So let's uncomment this, so make it active. And now let's start to display the error inside this model pop-up. So then let's put this model pop-up inside this uh, error lambda expression. And once again, you don't need to display the error in console but this is just for testing purposes so i'm going to leave it but when you transfer this website to live or in production so you can just comment this out okay so it's up to you for testing purposes I have, i'm going to display it in console so i'll leave it as it is and now the next thing that i want to do is i'm going to get some errors as we know these errors is it's an array of errors if you notice here they are, this error is an array and it contains the sequence like 0, 1, the indexing for this array. So each error will be at one index position. And as you notice, the error is also a string. 
So since we are it, the server is returning the response and the response contains the error array. So the key for it is error. So now let's go here. First thing that we want to do is we want to store that array of errors inside an array. And when we created our properties for this register component, we created an errorist, which was a string array. And the array was initialized in our ngOnit method with an empty value. So now let's first thing that we want to do is call that object. So error list equals to an empty array. And the reason to do that is because when I go back to my application and my application, for example, is in this state where the user has already clicked on the submit button and the errors have been displayed. Now, when the user clicks again, what I want to do is first get rid of all the old errors and then display the new errors because sometimes the user might not refresh the page, just change the values here and then just click submit. So if you don't in initialize the array again to an empty value, then it will just concatenate the old errors inside the previous array. So to avoid that situation, first thing that we want to do is first get rid of any errors if they are present, then add the new error list to that array. So now the next thing that we want to do is, is run a for loop on the array that contains all the errors. So let's go back to the client application. And if you notice, this array, the error array contains many other arrays, like one of them is value, one of them is this object here, and so on. So the array that we are interested in is the value array, which contains all the errors that were returned related to the registration. So the this was basically the problem why the user was not registered. So inside the error, error array, we have another array called as the value. Now, when we want to access this array inside the error, we will access it by calling the error dot value array. Since our entire result is encapsulated inside this error object or this error lambda expression first thing that we want to do is call that encapsulated object then call the error array and then call the value array so now inside the for loop what we want to do is when we provide the length we provide the length using error dot error dot value so let's create that so i have created a for loop here initialize the iterators value to zero and then the length how many times we want the loop to run on the array is basically the error dot error dot the value array dot length so depending on the elements or objects inside the array the number of elements that many times this loop will run and then every time the loop runs the index value or the iterator will increment so this is basic uh, for loop javascript that we learn when we start learning javascript for any object oriented programming type that you're learning you will always learn for loops where loops and so on so i don't need to explain it in detail any further most or every one of you should understand this so now the next thing that we want to do is we want to push the value of each array that is error dot error dot value and the index position of each object inside that error value inside this empty error list. So let's go back to the application to understand it better. So here inside this uh, value array, the first error is at index position zero. So when the loop runs and the value of i is zero, this value will be pushed inside that empty error list that we created. The second time the value of i increments, now the value of i is 1. So this value here will be pushed inside the empty array. Hope this is clear now. 
Now I'm getting some error here saying that the property push does not exist, but this error is merely caused in the IntelliSense because this shouldn't be an error. Push method should be recognized. And if I save this file, if there is any error, my application should show it. But if you notice, I'm going to refresh again. And there is nothing that is showing here. I can refresh. So it's probably caused by IntelliSense that the push object is not identified or recognized because we have already initialized it. So if you get this error, you can ignore it. It's probably caused once again by the IntelliSense. So now what we want to do is we will console.log each value. So here it needs to be dot value because the value array contains the errors. So once again, don't just leave it as error dot error because when you leave it as error dot error, it will count all the arrays inside the main error array. So you, what we are targeting specifically is the value array because we want the values or the reasons why this user could not register. Now let's once again try it. Kauri password is test underscore one and my email which I used to register this user. Let's click submit. So model popped up but it's not displaying the errors because we have not yet coded that so now if i go and click on this oh well before i click on the error you see it's console.logging inside the console the arrays we had two errors and it logged both the errors error at index position uh, zero and error at index position one as you see when I explained it earlier. So it is logging it. That was because we have a console.log here for every time the loop runs. Now we can comment it out now because since we have tested the code. Now we can what we can do here is now we need to display this error not on the console but inside the model pop-up. So displaying it inside the model pop-up, first thing that we want to do is first we will create a model message in surf object in our property because when our model is here we need to display a message correct user registration was un unsuccessful something like that so we will store that message inside that message object so let's go ahead and create it let's call it as model message uh, and let's keep it string and that should be it now let's go here and here inside the model object that we are popping up first thing that we want to do is call the model message message yes is equal to we will set the value is as your registration was on successful and you can put your own message here just keeping it simple so your registration was unsuccessful and now what i want to do is go to the html component of our registration Okay, let's just first copy this so I don't make spelling mistakes. And then here, where do I want to display that message? I want to display it here on top before the list of errors. So I'm going to add two curly braces like this and then display the message here. So that value will be displayed here. If I go back here and let's say once again, I try this. Uh, I click this and now you can see that the message has been added there so that's makes it more easy for the user to understand what was the problem registration was the next unsuccessful so now let's go back to our application and go back to our component.ts 
and yes so everything is fine and we should be done with this code now we just save this and go back to the component here HTML and we need to display the list of errors and what array contains the list of errors the array that contains the list of errors is error list so let's first use our ng if condition so ng if and we will say now we want to loop through each value inside that error list so we cannot use ng if so what we want to do is we'll use ng4 apologies ng4 what is ng4 ng4 is like a for loop which will help us to loop or iterate through a collection so ng4 using ng4 first thing that we want to do is let error of the collection that can that you want to loop through so it's error list now this error is like a keyword so if anytime you have used a for each loop you will say uh, for each item in items or for each uh, chocolate in chocolates array something like that so this is like a keyword you can use anything here so e you can use error I use I'm using error because I don't want to use error because the lambda expression also contains error so I just want to keep it unique so I'll leave it as error and then now using this we can loop through this error list and after looping through the error list we want to just display each error inside this lead tag so for every error error item there will be a lead tag created and that should be it so let's go back to our application let's test it now and use the old email so password come on okay now let's click submit so as you see now we have the two errors that are being displayed by our server in reference to the registration are being displayed now inside the modal pop-up so that should be it for this video tutorial where we learn how we can display the errors inside a modal pop-up i will not be creating any modal pop-up for displaying login related errors or messages because we have a alert box there if you wish to you can use the model pop-up instead of the alert box there in the login form and make it more presentable but this is it for this video tutorial if you have any questions please use the comment section thank you for watching this video please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy